All right, welcome back. We're now going to talk about a topic which is related to the global holistic model that we were talking about under the topic of climate change. And by the way, please watch the 14-minute video uh, that's posted under the topic global holistic model. Can't wait. Yo, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm making too many hands. You up. see the the picture here? Yeah. It's got too much ceiling up here. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, okay. Here, let me let me pull it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Bring it again. All right. Much. Okay. Much better. Great. Okay. Thanks, Dad. That's that's an improvement. Okay. So um, the topic is it's sort of a subtopic of the global holistic model in a sense. What it really is is creating. Rather than this global holistic model of the entire economy, right? And actually, the 14-minute video I just referenced, that's, for, that's mainly focused on food and agriculture sectors. But really, it can be extended to the entire economy. Um, now let's talk about one strategy for achieving that global holistic model, span, spanning all sectors, is go sector by sector, right? And create specific models for specific sectors, and then tie them together. Okay. That's that's one approach, um, but one and w perhaps the most certainly the most important sector is the whole sector of agriculture, food production, distribution, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just defining that as a sector because it's all integrated. Um, it's one of the leading, uh, and, and also include forestry, fisheries, fish farming, deep deep sea fishing, basically everything that's related to food and anything that can be grown right and processed including forest products hemp etc cetera, etc cetera. and if we if we take that as our sector and we create a, a global holistic model for that sector and optimize for it we're going to see a glide path or trajectory towards an ideal state in terms of food production and distribution where everyone is nourished etc cetera, etc cetera. now that's all very idealistic right because it's nothing more than a mathematical exercise until <clears throat> we take that glide path and uh, build into it the marketing, the branding, the PR, the politics, the negotiation, the peace and conflict, the yada, 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 on and on and on. Um, and built into it, of course, will be all the hydrology. And that's a topic that we could talk for hours on. We're not going to because we need to accelerate things here a bit. Um, but the, the global holistic model as pertains to that sector, the food and agriculture and forestry, et cetera, sector, um, transforming that is not only vital to our survival, but it's going to be um, it's going to be greatly accelerated by the global movement that we talked about in the eradication of hunger video, right? Which we which we shot a few videos ago. Um, that uh, is going to build tremendous momentum for transforming the entire sector uh, and building support for that, building popular support for that. Also, with the 30 billion per year in budget that we'll have for eradicating hunger, we collectively, right, the organizations that will be that will be getting those funds. I got it. I got it. I got it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. The organizations which will be managing those funds and deploying those funds um, will. That's the we I'm talking about. We will become the largest purchaser of agricultural commodities on the planet because you know we've got a budget of 30 billion bucks. Not that all of it's going to relief. Whatever, whatever is needed for relief will go to relief so that everyone is fed. But then, you know, the rest will go to sustainable development projects. Um, water projects being, being probably at the top of the list. Water projects, soil conservation, reversing desertification. So you see, it's all integrated. It's all interlinked. These aren't separate topics. So um, we'll build a model. We'll optimize it. We'll figure out the optimal glide path. We'll work out the marketing, the branding, the politics so that Go the governments around the world will ultimately pass the, the legislation that will be in support of getting us to this ideal. And it may, be, it may take a series of stages of legislation as opposed to one big, you know, grand slam that takes care of all of it. But I don't know. That's all pre premature. That's what we need to discuss uh, here in Spectral Radius. So that's where we're kicking off all these, these sort of kickoff videos. But um, just one interesting point I wanted to make about all this is that in addition to lobbying governments and being the largest purchaser of agricultural commodities in the world and having all this massive budget, there's ac there are actually even more powerful ways, I believe, that we can transform the sector from the standpoint of making it sustainable and consistent with the compassionate economy that we talked about on a, on a previous video. And that is the fact that 
with this intelligent system, we can create a whole, a whole set of web services that we can provide to farmers, food brokers, food distributors, food manufacturers, food retailers, food service, the whole food sector, agriculture and food sector, but starting with the farmers to help, uh, for lack of a better word, influence them in the direction of a more, more you know, sustainable trajectory for the entire planet. And again, that trajectory may take a series of stages. So um, a, big part of, a big part of that is going to be hemp, replacing wood as you know, one of the main ingredients for uh, building materials. Actually, it's going to it's going to substitute both for wood and for cement and and you know concrete, mm -hmm. because there's 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 a whole class of, of products called hempcrete, right? Using hemp in different ways to make concrete, and there's there's actually fascinating ways that you can actually combine hemp with fly ash and other ingredients, and make you know very durable um, building materials. You can also make hemp plywood. Uh, you can make hemp textiles. So hemp can substitute for so many other things in the economy that will. Hemp is actually a, it's a it's a great way to sequester carbon using a minimum of water. I've heard there are some cases where it takes one fifth the water to produce a kilogram of textile than it does to produce that textile out of cotton. If you if you substitute hemp for cotton, uh, likewise with building materials, hemp I think can be you know several times as productive as forests in terms of tons of building material or tons of you know whatever uh, products that'll come out of it as opposed to wood. Uh, and, and consuming less water. In fact, hemp, I've, I've, I understand, I, I need to get the facts on this, but a friend of mine told me that it can actually be used for reversing desertification. It can be one of those crops that can be planted because it uses very little water, sequesters lots of carbon, returns value to the soil. I mean, it's just this amazing plant, right, that your grandfather, my great-grandfather, was the largest grower of in the world, Diego Pellicer. So anyway, um, but that's just one agricultural commodity. Imagine applying that same level of thinking to all categories of agricultural commodities, all categories of forest products, livestock, fisheries, yada, 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 the whole, whole, whole gamut, the whole sector. And we can actually then start to influence the market. Uh, one of the ways is to influence it is through marketing. Watch the Global Holistic video. I talk about some of the marketing stuff there, but, you know, and, and also talking about uh, reversing desertification through marketing, that, that had a whole conversation, albeit brief, about marketing those livestock products, right? And I gave beef as an example, but it may well be that we don't want to use beef at all, right, in reversing desertification, much as it might help. It might be better to use XYZ. I don't even know, right? But whatever the most, whatever the optimal mix of livestock is, let's go with, let's figure that out uh, and go with that. Um, that's all part of this, of this model and this optimal solution for, for that entire sector. So um, anyway, lots more to say about that, but let's, let's cut this short for now because we've got a couple more videos to shoot and then we're gonna wrap for today. Anything else to add to that, Dad? No. Did I sufficiently address the issue of water? I know I didn't, but I mentioned it because that's a whole other issue that we need to get into. And I really, let's get, some, let's get some experts in on the conversation. Well, let's proceed. Very good, we'll see you in our next video.